Hello and welcome. Today we are going to talk about SRM, Supply Relationship Management. We'll take a look at a few slides and see uh, how SRM fits in with ERP and the different components of SRM. And then we'll look directly into the system to see how we work with SRM. So this is the system landscape. Uh, in the middle is the SRM server and then you have different components so let's take a quick look starting from here this is your uh, BWBI where all the reporting is done so through RFC the data from the SRM server goes into BI BI has its own database and is used for reporting this is the main component uh, that SRM integrates with the core ERP system and we'll take a close look at this in the subsequent slides there are multiple integration scenarios with ERP um, and depending on the business requirements you choose one over the other then you have the supplier self services or supplier enablement this essentially is a web-based scenario that provides uh, processing capabilities for service orders and integrate suppliers into the procurement processes of your core organization so such suppliers that integrate using this functionality they do not require their own sales system to offer products and services all they need is internet access in order to access the hosts order which is your company's order and content management then you have the live auction cockpit uh, this essentially provides a real-time environment for direct bidding in live auctions uh, typically in a fast-paced and highly competitive uh, environment uh, these auctions simulate the experience of an actual auction by utilizing technology to provide instantly updated information on all the auction activity and uh, when actually implementing this you have a choice you can implement it either on a Java server or an ABAP server and then you have one of the main components of SRM the catalog management MDM this component provides catalog content management functions and a procurement catalog enabling users to search compare and buy products and services from suppliers with this component you can provide supplier catalogs in a web-based environment you can import catalog structures or data and transfer catalog items to your procurement application so this is a diagram that explains it in a bit more detail uh, we won't go into all the details at this point but we'll save it for a future lesson and finally you have the uh, NetWeaver portal this can be used to integrate uh, different functionalities, catalog management, the core SRM server and others, uh, maybe CRM, um, maybe uh, real estate for example and stuff. So we'll, we'll take a close look at this as we go along. Now we take a quick look at certain implementation scenarios uh, which drive how the SRM server interacts with the other um, core systems like the ERP system so the first one is the classic scenario you implement the SRM server and one or more ERP systems all the shopping carts refer to material management processes in your ERP backend and your ERP system in this scenario is the leading system goods receipts and invoices can be entered in the SRM server or in the ERP backend system. In the extended classic scenario, the per PO, the purchase order, is created locally within the SRM server. If the data in the shopping cart is insufficient to complete the purchase order, this data is supplemented manually within uh, SRM before being transferred to the backend ERP system. The PO in SRM is the leading PO, so uh, SRM is the leading system for the purchase order. 
and like before goods receipts and invoices can be entered in SRM server or in the backend ERP system. The standalone scenario where the coupling is even less than before in this scenario the shopping cart items create local procurement documents only this means that all follow-on processes such as confirmation or invoice have to be performed in the SRM server the last scenario which is not really a scenario but a combination of more than one scenarios that we just discussed so in this one for example a combination of the classic and standalone scenarios uh, would mean that some items are handled locally while others are transferred to the ERP so this slide represents the organization structure for SRM uh, we won't go into the details here but we will now log on into the SRM system and take a close look at the organize, organization structure and how it is set up and what each component of that does so let us now log on to the SRM system and my user ID is user 7 and I enter my password and this is what the uh, supplier relationship management or the SRM system looks like so now we will go to the organization management so if you know the transaction code of uh, the organization model you can write it here but if you don't you can go via the SAP menu so SAP menu master data org model ppoma underscore bbp so this is the transaction I double click here and this should take me to the org model which is what this is so if I just expand my node on the right side this is what my model looks like so this organization unit at the top is my root organization unit and this represents the highest level in the org structure when you build organizational structures in SRM you build them from the root organizational unit downwards so you create this first and then you move down an org unit represents any type of organizational entity for example it could be a company like this is the Dutch SRM company it could be a subsidiary a division like this is the purchasing organization uh, and so on org units are one of the objects that make up the organizational plan uh, and then you have a user attribute so this is my position and this position carries with it some attributes so if I double click on this I get uh, multiple tabs one of which is attributes for this position that I just double clicked mark mark manager and each user attribute represents a value that is stored under a particular name within the org structure you can define multiple and default values for attributes you must define different values for host dependent attributes in configurations with backend systems so this is um, to do with the integration scenarios uh, and how you define values when you are talking to multiple systems in the backend so we'll now take a look at uh, the org structure for a company Phoenix which is a standard company and uh, org structure used for IDIS uh, exercises so we go to search Phoenix and we have this Phoenix Enterprise here and just make this smaller so we can see in more detail so this is my Phoenix Enterprise so under my Phoenix Enterprise I've got the Phoenix support and if I double click on that and go to address I've got my address as Lancaster in Atlanta 
So I want to copy additional organizational units for Phoenix Enterprises uh, support. So I just right click on this, say copy, and I've got uh, press enter. and I get a copy of that. Now I can double click and change the address. So doing this uh, makes the task of creating the whole organization structure much quicker. So now I'm going to set up an attribute for the Phoenix Enterprise root org unit. Double click. I go to functions and I set it up as a company. 3000 and here I choose which backend system the company is relevant for and I choose the IDIS ALE system and then I save. So using one of one or more of these tabs I can uh, assign more attributes to my organizational unit so this really extends much wider so you have something called extended attributes which you should be able to see now uh, you can do inheritance for attributes and you can check whether the attributes that you've assigned are uh, not in conflict with any of the others So this was a quick overview of org structure in SRM, how you maintain it, how you assign attributes, how you are able to create it quickly by copying org units rather than creating them afresh and so on. So next we'll look at the portal and see how we work within the uh, portal for SRM. To log on to the portal, I need this special URL which needs to be provided typically by the basis uh, consultants who are part of the project. So I get the usual user ID and password and this is identical to what I used when I logged into the SAP GUI. So this is what my portal screen looks like. I've got different tabs. So for example, if I go to strategic purchasing, you can just ignore this because it will actually work. So I go to contract management. You can see the various sub tabs here. So under strategic purchasing, I've got detailed navigation tabs can go to contract management and try to create a new contract for example if I click on this I get a new screen asking me which type of contract do I want to create now no description could be found because the customizing isn't complete for this one so if I quickly go back to my customizing SPRO supplier relationship management SRM server cross application basic functions um, and then I go to my transaction types so what we should be able to see is um, you know these two transaction types are the SRM contract types SRM contract types versus ECC so we are trying to create SRM contract types and in customizing we will see where these transaction types are defined and we'll actually see the missing description so if I all tab I go to transaction types and my first one is the SRM contract so if I go to transaction types here I see CCTR PCTR with no description for CCTR all tab back to here so what you customize customize here is what is actually reflected on the portal 
So I try to create a PCTR purchasing contract. And I get this screen which I'll try to reduce the size of and take it through it quickly. So this is my create purchasing contract. The various information that I can put, product ID that I can select here. And if I scroll to the right, I see a whole lot of information that I can put. A lot of this is driven by what I customize in the backend and this helps me carry on my job as a purchasing manager or as a procurement agent. So instead of creating a whole brand new contract we will simply look at an existing contract and this is what it looks like and these are the details around the product ID, the item category, the supplier and so on. So I hope that gave you a very very quick overview of what SRM is all about. Taught you a little bit about portal, a bit about customizing and a little bit about org structure. So hope you find this session useful. Uh, see you again.